Hey guys, so today I wanted to show you how I do my indoor shadows. So if you look here and here, um, there are flames. So here there's like a torch and then here there's a campfire obviously. Um, and I wanna show you guys how I do my indoor shadows versus my outdoor shadows. So I showed you how I do a like heavy cast shadow. These are like softer indoor shadows. So different styles for different people. Um, okay, so let's start from the top so i'm gonna remove my shadow layers first and that's it so we have my regular old map and i'm gonna create a new layer with Control shift n called tutorial shadows and basically what i'm gonna do is take black i'm gonna fill the whole map in with black um, you can use whatever color you like. If you use like a brown or something, just make sure that you set it to multiply instead of normal. I'll set it to multiply to show you what that looks like. Um, that'll just make it uh, actually darken the, the map um, the way that like shadows actually would. And then we're gonna create a layer mask. So we're gonna click on this and now we have our layer mask. So basically what I do when I create shadows is I lower the opacity to probably 80 um, and I'll grab a brush. I have my default colors, but you can press D for default colors if you don't have them. Um, and I'm gonna make sure that my opacity is about 30. My flow is about 30. And my size, uh, 80 is good. Maybe 120, nah, I think 80 or 100. Yeah, sure, that's good. So basically, um, actually I lied. I'm gonna do 300. <laughs> no, I lied again, 250. Um, okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is start carving out my shadows. So we're gonna press X to switch to black at the very bottom. Um, and I'm gonna start going like this. And you're kinda just gonna make sure that you have like soft edges to your shadows, obviously. So I know that there's a light source here. If I set up my grid, I also know that there is a light source right here. And you can take as little or as much time as you want with this. I think like usually when I draw shadows, it takes me a little bit because um, I like to clean up the edges, obviously. Um, I'm just gonna go like this. So that's like a, that's basically where my shadows end. And then I'm going to select these areas right here. You probably should zoom in for this. I'm gonna do that. I'm like struggling today, apparently. And I'm gonna do the same thing and just kind of like erase a little bit by the door. That probably looks terrible. Oh my goodness, what did I do? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just do that like this and fill in the edges later. Cool, so now I have a little bit missing from the door. And then for me, um, in my game, my crystals generate light. So I'll just go with like a 40 size brush and I'll like do 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 on each of them. But for the purpose of this tutorial, you guys already know how I erase my shadows. Um, we're not going to do that. So to summarize and to keep it simple, um, keep your opacity low. So mine's 30. Keep your flow low. Mine is also 30. Um, let's just make sure that like when you're, when you're erasing the edges, it stays nice and soft rather than these really harsh lines. Um, and that's for our first layer. And then we're gonna move into ambient occlusion shadows. And what those are, and I talked about those, I think a little bit before in another tutorial, um, is they're basically the shadows that gather where um, darkness catches the most. So if we erase this one, what am I doing? My Photoshop froze. Did it? No, we're good. Okay, so basically what we're doing is looking at areas on our map that um, would gather a lot of shadows. So like, for example, I'm gonna turn this up so you can see a little bit better. So basically you have a lot of shadows gathering like right here, right here, right here. And usually I'll go back and clean up the edges of this later on. Um, you'll have a lot of shadows gathering like right here. Basically like anywhere where light isn't shining. So my torch is right here, which means that it'll shine light right here, but then darken this side because it's closest to the light source. Right here. 
and I mean like that continues on for the rest of the map. So you'll always have like shadows gathering at like the roof, so the edges, basically. If you look around your room and there's like no light coming in, you'll notice that the corners of your room, so all four corners along the walls, they'll collect shadow. So you'll want to do this the whole way across pretty much. Blam blam. And this is so messy, I'm just kind of showing you guys, so don't judge me. This is not what it actually looks like in my game. I take a little bit more time. And remember, if you want like a nice straight line, you can press shift while you're drawing. Okay. And then blam. Beautiful, oh my God, that's art. Jeez Louise. And then there's a light source right here, which means that like back here, oh, wait, I lied. Which means like right here will be pretty dark. Oh, there's crystals there. I lied all over. But this is like a weird elevation. So from um, the wall over, it'll be pretty dark. I'll just go like this to make the shadow look nicer. And blam. So I'm sure you guys can like see where this is going. You can be a little bit less like all over the place with them. Like if you actually look at mine, they're a little bit cleaner. So you can see I have them basically in corners where the light isn't hitting. Um, and you wanna ensure that like they look somewhat clean. So holding shift down while you're drawing really, really helps. Um, yeah, so I mean, and then if you're ever using your eraser against the edges, you can do the same thing, like keep it a low flow and a low opacity, and then just shift like in the direction um, against the shadows so that you end up with like really, really nice lines. Cool. So hopefully that was like a little bit insightful for the shadow part. Now let's talk about the way that I color dodge to make my shadows look a little bit more vivid. So I'm gonna get rid of these tutorial layers cause I'm over them. We'll go like this. So this is what color dodging looks like blam 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 and you want to make sure that you save this with the layers that it's touching so usually i'll save this with the bottom layer um, but i'll kind of show you what that does and what it looks like so um i'm going to create a new layer called tutorial d cd <laughs> and then i'm going to pick up this color um it's like a really pastel -y orange and I'm just going to start drawing in where I think it needs to go. So I'm going to turn this opacity up to maybe like 100 so you can see like how sharp your lines are. And then I'm drawing in the wrong layer. And then you're going to go like this basically. And you're going to look at like where your lines are. And you're going to just try and line, up, line it up with the shadows um, that kind of cut off the light if that makes sense. Blam, blam, blam. And he's making sure that this is also clean-ish. It's some pencil, yeah. Knew it. Oops. <laughs> okay. Cool. Let's lower this down a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's change this layer to a color dodge layer. Oh my God, that's beautiful. And I'm gonna change it to like 25. Cool. And you'll see that um, the edges are looking like really muddy. Um, usually that just means that the color is touching black. So let's erase the edges. And that'll soften the color up. So you'll see like that center yellow color is nice. Um, the like orangey sort of like burn color, not so much. So let's fix that. I'm just gonna go along and like messily clean that up. And you can kind of see like as quick as that was, obviously you're gonna make yours a little bit cleaner cause you're gonna spend more time. Um, it really like helps to create some contrast between the shadows. So what I'll do in this instance, um, if we turn this up to a hundred, and you turn, oh, that's a thousand, a thousand percent. You turn this up to a hundred, yeah. 
it just creates contrast. So you can kind of see the edges. Cool. I think I'm like dawdling on this for too long. So um, let's move on. But basically what I do is I'll like fill the space in, I'll tidy it up, and then I will look at it. So I'll put this to 60, which is like pretty much always my uh, opacity on my shadow layer. I'll put this to 25, which is usually the um, opacity of my color dodge. And then I'll look and I'll go, okay, so this is looking a little bit like spaced out here. So let's fill it in. Um, another thing to keep in mind is where would your light actually hit? So it probably wouldn't hit the top of this stone. So you want to make sure that this is like clean. It probably wouldn't hit the top of the barrel because it's like a ground uh, fire. So let's go like this. You know what I mean? So that's how you effectively highlight different areas. Um, same with this one. So here in my game, it's a torch. And um, I know that it's like a higher flame, so it would hit the top of this. So when I'm filling it in, I'm basically just going to go with a smaller brush, so like maybe 40. And I'm gonna highlight this like little edge right here. Blam, and I know the fire is hitting like right here, so let's do that. It's hitting the stone, and it's obviously hitting the rest of the space. So let's delete that layer, and I'll show you what my actual layer looks like. So you can see, so there's color dodging here, the front of the thing. Um, it hits the stone and then it disperses because it doesn't go past the stone. So there's like a shadow cast from the stone and there's color dodging beside it. Um, and the same thing here. It doesn't go up here because this is a cliff. Um, so it's not that high. So this is about like a, a two height cliff. Um, this is a one height cliff. You know what I mean? So the torch is about one. Sorry, the torches are like two tiles high. So obviously it's going to hit this. But if it's two tiles high, it probably ends at like the base of this. So it wouldn't hit that. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, this is like another like quick tutorial. So hopefully you guys found something useful from this. If you have any other questions or anything like that, just as always, leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you guys shortly. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in. Bye.